Ed. Welcome back to the Horseman Podcast, a show where we t- discuss our passions, interesting topics, with a free-flowing structure. This week, we are excited to bring you growth the moment before it hits and everything in between. We're so happy that you joined us. Greg, how you doing, my friend? I'm doing good. How are you doing, Josh? I'm just, I'm hanging in there, man. It's it's the, uh, you know, we've... We're getting close, a little closer to uh, to, to the, the cr- to the end. Yeah, a little closer to the end, man. And um, you know, it's it's uh, you know this 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 season has been um, pretty heavy heading. And uh, yeah, we've talked about like a lot more heavier topics. Yeah, like than, more consistently. Yeah, more consistently than I thought. And um, you know that 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 kind of begs the question. I mean, it's it's kind of in the, in the title a little bit. Growth the moment before it hits. And mm-hmm. you know, when we were discussing. You know that this uh, this podcast prior beforehand. You know we were, you know we want to kind of stress the like a little bit the point of that. You know growth is 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 insanely hard. Um, yes. To 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 accept. Um, we were uh, we were talking beforehand. We were kind of sharing some videos back and forth, and one of the ones that you know kind of came up as in a little uh, light note was uh there was a video where this guy was getting his id checked and uh the the guy saw that his birthday began with one nine you know as in the as in the 20th century and he's like oh yeah your birthday was in one nine i was like oh crap and you had that moment it's like you have that moment right before you grow up where you're like oh you know like now it's now it's coming to a head and and that's for a, like a lot of different things if you think about it because mm-hmm. you know before you go off to college or you know before you graduate high school or before you get your first car you get that moment where it slaps you where you go holy shit this is actually happening and and you kind of get that sense of a little bit of responsibility to that point of now I'm growing up now there's things I actually need to be able to do and it can be scary but at the same time really exciting Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's never a dull moment um, in that growth. I know I remember when I was first getting my car. I've always seen adults drive, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I want to do this. (laughs) (laughs) And, you know, just getting that. And it's just like a whole, like, I, I, I hate to say this Disney song, but it's like, it's like a whole new world. Exactly. Um, and I feel like that, how, um, growth is and, you know, and like the moment before it hits, it is like always super nerve wracking because it all, you don't know, uh, what it is to come. You kind of have like a vague idea. Then like once you're in it, it's just like, oh man, here we go. Like we got to make, you know, the best of it and we got to keep continuing to go, keep going. Um, I know with the pandemic i know a lot of people have felt like they've been like set back but i'm going like take a quick minute to tell like my story i feel like it was kind of like a huge kind of growth spurt that i went through um so it's just like i moved over to seattle um with practically no money um moved into a house with people that i didn't know and at the time you know it's just like like it's just like oh man all that could seem very overwhelming and then like boom you're locked down and yeah and you had a little bit more of a growth spurt because you learned how to freaking cook yeah i learned how to cook yeah during that time period because it's just like i didn't know how to cook then we had the homeboy josh he's like you can't cut things like that you gotta cut it like this you know uh we were lucky we had two uh really good actually three really good chefs in the house um mm-hmm. uh jeff uh lamar and Tusho, and um they all just showed us how to cook, you know, in a bunch of different styles. And it's just like, wow, that's that's yeah. uh, really cool. And it, we just learned a bunch of different things. And we didn't know at the time because we thought, you know, when COVID hit um, and just like when all the restrictions were there and uncertainty, we thought we were going to be there for maybe a year. Mm-hmm. You know, that's what I was thinking. At first, you know, before everybody kind of started getting, like, loosey-goosey with, like, restrictions and yeah. all. Um, but that's what it felt like, where it's just like, oh, man, we're going to be in yeah. here for a whole year. I thought uh, it was going to be long-term as well, and it ended up mm-hmm. be, you know, kind of short-lived a little bit. Yeah. Um, 
But yeah, that that yeah, because that, that the pandemic's a good point. Um, that that's a really good point that you made there, because I think a lot of people, if you go back and look for yourselves before the pandemic, you're like, I think a lot of people really. I'm not gonna say a lot of people. I think maybe the, the you felt this way. May, maybe I did. I know I've talked to a few people who felt like this way too. There's a lot of people I talked to that felt a lot more independent nowadays yeah. than they did prior to the pandemic. Because it was like once the pandemic hits, it's like, oh shit, you gotta learn how to do things on your own mm-hmm. because there's so many restrictions and there's like nothing's open and everything's closed and everyone's scared and no one wants to do anything. So you kind of just have to do things yourself. And I felt a little bit more independent after it. I know I've talked to a couple people that felt a little bit more independent, but I've also talked to a number of people that felt that feel more dependent now than anything, um, which is interesting, but not in any way unsurprising because different um, uh, personality types. Yeah, different personality types and and different approaches to different problems, not problems, different um, areas yeah. in people's lives. Um, yield different results than what one or two may one than what one person may think, um, and I know that definitely hit me too because when I moved into the house, um, I didn't feel all that independent. Um, but after you know living in the house, I was like, I, I think I, I think I got this because you we had the cooking thing, um, and then we had the career talk too. Yeah, and we learned how to be independent yep. while being dependent on each other. Yeah, I think that was the biggest thing that we learned where it's just like oh we should depend on each other for this Mm -hmm. but we should be independent for us in these areas like the community aspect of it like that was huge because i think if we probably didn't have if we didn't like interact at all i think it probably would have been probably the shittiest time of our life yeah or or, or a big part of the shittiest time of our life if we had never interacted at all never i I wouldn't even say shitty i think it we would have just been very stagnant yeah um and, like, we just took that time, you know, to grow and change. And I think, you know, that was a very important aspect of it. And I think it's an aspect that we cannot forget. Um, growth is a continuous thing, um, whether you see it or not. Um, I know we said this earlier in um, podcast that, you know, the sun is always shining beyond the clouds. And then flowers always grow when it's gray. So... Mm-hmm. You, even though it may not be like prevalent, you know, in the moment, it's just like you got to realize um, it, everything's kind of compounding on top of each other um, and it's going either one or, or two directions and you want it to go in the best direction that you can and do your absolute best. Um, with that being said, there's a little bunch of different areas that you can like really apply this to, whether it's your health, your finances, your personal happiness your relationships uh career personal growth like there's a lot of big areas that we gotta focus on yeah um so josh do you want to share anything that you're doing in your areas yeah i think um one of the biggest ones that uh currently i'm working that i've been working on myself since i moved to washington Mm -hmm. is um it's uh it has a little bit to do with independency but it's also mainly um i kind of give you guys a little background i grew up in a um Christian conservative homeschooling household um, in, you know, very, uh, the boondockish area of, of Virginia, and smack dab in the middle of nowhere. And um, I'm not going to say it was a bad thing, but there were definitely some things that um, I've learned that uh, on on my own that I looked back on, I was like, eh, that exact, that that was not the exact ideal lesson for me to learn while, while there. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, there were a lot of great moments. Uh, there, there were some pretty good moments. Uh, there were some pretty harsh moments too. But um, in the overall uh, essence of it, I think what I've learned so far is, as you know, keeping an open ear um, and making sure that you're actually listening. Uh, yeah, you know, a big, a big part of. Um, I, I'm not gonna. I'm not even gonna approach the 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 failure word part of it. I think the. Uh, um, the, the biggest thing that I either missed or wasn't taught when I was younger was to actually sit down and listen to somebody when they're talking. Um, and my the biggest issue I had growing up was I always was ready for the response. Yep. But I was never actually listening to what they were saying. So that's something that I'm continually working on. And, and that kind of hit pretty hard, too, with a friend because they were like, are you even listening to me or are you just responding? 
mm-hmm. and it was like, oh crap, I'm 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 missing something, and it's that it is that oh crap moment that you have that you go oh lord, what did I do? And then you start going you start going over things, and I think the the biggest thing that's helped me, and I think a big I think a big thing that's helped a lot of people I've talked to about it, is that they ask for help. Um, they're not trying to figure it out because I'm always I, I like to ask for assistance when I'm unsure because I know that there is someone out there who knows more about it than I do and is and if they're willing to pass on the information I'm willing to learn and I think that's that's a big that's a big part of what I'm working on right now um, and you've gone better at it as well too like especially like when we started this podcast as well because before you were always waiting for your turn to respond and make a comment but going out throughout this season you have been um actively practicing listening so instead of a response it's an active yeah uh, you're part being a part of the conversation station instead of okay now it's my turn to talk exactly <laughs> yeah and yeah that's it that it was it was it was that oh crap moment that was like there needs to be some growth here mm-hmm. there there i need to work on this area a little bit and i think it's a um it's a it's been a big reason i think uh for for my um for my mental health too mm-hmm. uh because it's not so much that i'm looking forward to responding i'm looking forward to hearing what the other person has to say which make, one makes me more engaged in the conversation, but also two, it makes the other person feel more engaged in the conversation. Oh yeah, and you're able to have a lively talk rather than one person's talking and the other person is just responding. Yes. Um. So that's that's one area I think um that that I've been trying to improve um on. I think the other one I think is, um, just trying to be like, uh, a a really positive person. Um, cause there, elaborate on that. What so, do you mean by positive? So when I was growing up, there was a lot of negativity around, um, around me. Um, the people that I grew up around, uh, I met a few of them with, with passions and with goals and aspirations, but I met a lot of them who were just kind of stuck in their own little head mm-hmm. and didn't really know how to deal with it. And so they would project that on other people in the form of, oh, you can't do this right. Oh, you can't do that right. This isn't this isn't the way you're supposed to go about it. That's the way you should go about it. But now that I've been out here, it's, hey, um, thought about trying that for for a bit. I know that's that's worked for me. Worked for a bunch of people. Maybe try that. Oh, and and while you're at it, there's also a hundred other different things that you can try. And it's more so of being able to tell a person look there's more than one way of doing things there's a there's yes. hundreds of ways of doing things and that automatically sparks my mindset and going wow that's not such a downer there's actually kind of hope out that and that it and that puts it into a positive perspective of there's always something that you can try and there's always something that you can do and maybe it's not going to yield the result you expect but it's going to be different than doing just nothing or the one thing that hasn't been working over and over. Yes. And the biggest part of that is just talking with someone. Because, like, my thing is I love to tell jokes because it puts a smile on someone's face. Oh, yeah, man. And I know that when I'm talking to someone, when they have a smile on their face, oh, that conversation's a little bit better than they were sitting there like, what what the hell are you talking about? You're, you're, you're doing nothing I'm not feeling any from part of this. I don't understand the memo you're trying to send me right now. <laughs> so basically what I'm trying to get is, is that... No, I, I get what okay. you're saying. That was a joke. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's... And I I try not to be that uh, the person that walks in the room and everyone's like, oh, fuck. Oh, this guy again. Yeah, no, it's... Yeah, I try not to be that person. He's still odd, this guy again when it comes to the jokes. Yeah, it's just like... it comes to the jokes, but when I walk through the door... I, uh, at least at work, I, there's a bunch of people that are like, "Oh yeah, that's gonna be a good night." It's and then you know, night. it's it's that feeling where you you know that you've kind of you you've made a positive impact at least in your workplace. Yes, that makes your. I don't. At least for me, it took me a while to realize how much of an influence a positive work environment has just on your 
overall mental health. Oh, yeah. Because when you're going to work and you're like, this fucking sucks. When you go home at night, the oh, yeah. last thing you want to do is go to sleep because you know you have to wake up the next morning to go back. Yeah, and, and you have to recuperate and all of that. Yeah, and that takes a, that takes a toll on your mental health. And also as well, too, like the older you get, like I feel like the less time I have for that. Yeah. Where it's just like I don't have time to recuperate from, you know, like this drama or that drama. It's just like I got this stuff to right. get it's, done. You don't have time for the bullshit. Yeah, I don't have time for bullshit. It's just like hit me straight up. Yeah. And I think that is super healthy as well, too. And just because, like, there's a lot going on, you know, I know it can feel overwhelming and, you know, kind of like anxious. You're like, ah. But. <laughs> I feel like there's such a comfort to it as well, too, once you kind of, like, start cutting out, like, well, this is annoying, this is annoying, you know, that, this and that, and then you just start focusing on what you feel is true to you and true uh, to what you need to do around you, and I feel like a lot of things start falling into place, and it's, like, subconsciously as well, too, it's not, it, it may be, like, dang, like, I hit all the green lights today, you know, going to work. Like, I didn't expect that. Um, and even, like, you know, some sad stuff comes, but as long as you're working hard, you know, you're doing the things that you like, I think you really don't have too much to worry about. Like, I don't know. Like, I really don't worry. Like, there's a lot of things, you know, that are scary and overwhelming in the world, but I know, like, I do my best to do my part in taking care of like myself and others around me and i know that has like for me calmed down you know like the ex existential dread that we may occasionally get in but i also feel like that has also made me the most creative in finding mm -hmm. solutions to some of these problems around us yeah i may have not solved world hunger even though like the grinch has you know <laughs> In that Jim Carrey movie. <laughs> Stop world hunger. <laughs> yeah. Stop world oh, hunger. Don't tell it. Self -willy. And, yeah, and, self -pity. Then, and then <laughs> go into some self-pity. And then <laughs> back at it again. Um, but yeah, like, it, but, it, but it's so true. And even if it's just that small action, I feel like it helps you keep going and moving forward. Like for me, what I'm uh, working on now is... Like, as Josh said, uh, more active listening. I know I tend, to, I actually tend to be quick with people. And because just, like, working on a variety of film sets and just with a bunch of non-creative people, they can start talking in circles for a while. And, like, for me, it's just like, yeah, I get it. Okay. You know, it's like, I got the idea in my mind. Is there anything else? And then they say the exact same thing but differently <laughs> and you're like okay um is there anything else and then they say it again but differently you know um and i know i'm very quick to uh, dismiss it however i'm taking the time it's just like maybe they said it again differently because maybe there's a subtext that i'm not uh reaching as well too because everybody has a bunch of different communication styles um even though like like for me it's just like i'm good at reading people reading people's body language all of that because just how i grew up i didn't learn how to actually listen to people until like i was like five or six so i was mm. like super behind and um not super behind but it's just like hey like once you start actually understanding you it know, was like that uh the uphill battle that yeah it was a, an uphill battle um um, so I, I just became like very good at like not reading lips, but like reading visual cues about people's body language, their energy, all of that. Um, and that, and that's in like, and like my vision as well too. So that's like how I, that kind of explains like how I am where it's just like, oh, okay. <laughs> and so it's just like, I am, I'm really good at like reading, you know, that, but that is something that I am actively working on is like listening i'm like okay this is not my strongest scent or um but i'm going to do my best you know i think you know that is you know part of the growing process and i think what's also really exciting about growing is like once you say that word i never really think about an end it's kind of like the seasons in a, in yeah. a strange way 
when it's just like oh yeah dude it's growing you know like if you look at plants or mother nature or any of that they're like oh yeah they're still growing and it's just like shit man it's the dead of winter there ain't no leaves on this tree how it be growing it's what it's it's what's underneath it's one what's what what is underneath that you know the fire beneath the tree uh finds to stay alive and i think that's something that we as humans actually go through actually quite a bit but it's not as you know um visual as you know mother nature um says it so sorry i'm just going through this thought right now i just (laughs) thought about it so it's just like you're here you're hearing the exact same process and but it's so true and like thinking about the tree life it's just like wow damn like (laughs) it, it, it holds so true um it's not just externally it's also internally as well too um it all takes time um yeah that's the biggest thing it just takes time and it takes work you like it just doesn't happen overnight do you ever feel like kind of on lines of like really when you're growing up and you don't want to deal with the bullshit anymore do you feel like find yourself as you grow older that you know maybe someone does something that pisses you off and like i do not i I can't get involved that that's too much wasted energy um it just depends on what it is that that, that's the biggest thing um uh, there's like I do remember like a couple stories, you know. I won't necessarily share them. Uh, they're not relative, but there there were really horrific uh, events, and uh, it's just like I couldn't just like stand stand around. It's just like, dude, I gotta get involved, you know. Um, and you know, and it helped the, that person as well too, and like helped out the whole situation. But it's just like I feel like after a while you just can't like sit anymore you just gotta do it yeah like like the more that you sit the harder it becomes but the work is but the more it drags on you and that's and that hurts <laughs> you know and i know all of us don't want to be in like this existential pain anymore <laughs> yeah sometimes <laughs> <laughs> and it's like and the best way to like combat that is by doing and I think that is the most inspiring thing for everybody. Because I know we all like seeing the quick hoorahs, you know, whether it's on Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, or whatever platform you're watching. And it's just like, oh, yeah, that's great. But you also have to remember, we got to um, uh, 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 take take in mind that it's just like we have to do that in our own personal life as well too Mm -hmm. to uh keep going and uh doing good as well too like the people in those videos yeah 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 and it's kind of it's it's um it's it's a little funny when you say get involved Mm -hmm. because like there there are a lot of moments especially at at, like in in the workplace where or even just in personal life in general oh yeah like there are you're, many opportunities. You're uh, you're having because a we're convers- all living. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Where you like having a conversation with a person, and they're, you, it's not that they're saying the things that, um, that you pick up. It's just the the general sense of the conversation where you feel like you really can't just stand around and and, and, and do nothing, but like you also don't know what to say at the same time. Yeah, I feel like the older I get now. The less that I know, don't know what to say. Mm. Um, like I hear a lot of people. Well, not a lot of people, but a few people try to come to me with advice. And I know, like in my earlier days, it's just like I could go on rants, you know, for hours of like, "You got this," yada yada yada. Have like the whole inspirational speech, and now it's just like man i'd be lucky if i have five minutes of that you're right you know it's like i'm not as much of a preacher because i know everybody's on their own path and their own their own different journey and i feel like i'm lucky enough to have this person here and i know they have like their stuff to do and it's just like i've just gotten like really quick about it where just like if i see something that's wrong it's just like just say it you know it's just like i don't think this person's good for you or it's just like "Hmm, i don't know about that and um just be confident in saying that um and just like not holding back and just being like charismatic it's just like you're not doing that to be spiteful it's just like hmm uh 
you know, because there's already enough bad characters in the world and it's just like, we don't have to be one. Uh, we just have to continue to try to improve ourselves, even though it may be super small, like day by day, whether it's like deciding to eat healthy, whether it's deciding to be an active listener, whether it's to be, you know, better in your career or happiness and maybe these small things, but it, 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 it's all worth it. Um, even though it may not seem like it right now, remember, like everything's living, mm. you know, just like the tree of life. Yeah, you right. may be in the December state. You think, oh man, I don't see any growth. But when spring and summer comes along, bam, hot tree summer. <laughs> <laughs> hot tree summer. Oh, God. Oh, people will be barking up that tree for sure. <laughs> Don't I'm chop sorry. down my great ideas. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That was a joke that has some deep roots, okay? It's just – it's one of those things where, like, you know, there there are certain things that, you know, pop up that pop in your head too. Like there, there are certain, like, cues you get off. You were talking about reading, like, uh, uh, cues. Um, yes. What was it? Like body cues? Every – like, well, for me, I, I, I read uh, body language okay, really yeah. well. And it, that's, you know, I think that's one other thing that you can do, um, I guess, or I should rephrase that. One thing that I've been trying to do is, is read body language a little more. Mm -hmm. And there are certain times where I can look at a person and go, ah, they're not doing so well. What's mm -hmm. going on? And you, can't, you, you do get used to how a person is. If you're around, people, if you're around a certain person long enough, oh, yeah. you kind of get used to like how they're feeling in a general sense. And when one or two things kind of pops off the rails a little bit, you go, is everything okay? Because you start wondering. You have that little voice in the back that's like, something's not right here. Yeah. And it's – you don't have to be around everyone long enough. But if you're able to um, – if I'm able to look at a, look at a bunch of people and uh, for often enough, you yeah. start picking up body language on – other people that you're not around because it kind of comes out as like a second nature and you're able to either say something or or just it's observe um because when you walk in a room like there's like I, okay i tell jokes oh a yeah a lot of times there are times when you when i walk into a room and i take a look around it's like there is no way a joke would be great right here like you're not gonna walk into a funeral like and everyone said it's like well who done here like that's just not something you want to say at that point in time because it's just it you you read the room and you go, it is not my place to say something here, and yeah. that also speaks a lot on an outside point. Because when someone sees that, you know, you're kind of sitting back and observing, they're like, what are they thinking about? Or or I don't think so. I think you, um, my friend explained this uh, to me uh, once. You know, I was working at Starbucks, um, and she's like, some people have really good kenchi. I don't know if it's an actual term, so if I bu butchered this, I'm sorry. But this is how, <laughs> how she explained it to me. Is like because um, uh, Kenji is just being just like super self aware of like whatever the situation is, like whether you're like you said walking into your funeral home is like oh, maybe you know telling you know a joke right now if it's not like that type of funeral mm -hmm. may be appropriate. But if the person was you know like. A jokester you know it's just like hey who died in here and like some people might get a good laugh that's just like oh man that person would have said that <laughs> in this situation as well too yeah there's uh you know there's you, it, you just like learn like yeah. as you go like and it, i think it just comes with like life experience as yeah. well too where it's just like oh man i'm going to tell this story because go you know it. this is um this is not necessarily a growing experience but this is like where you can kind of have fun with, you know, like, oh, this is not a, a normal situation. Oh, well, I can't wait to hear this. So, <laughs> I've actually been waiting all season to tell this story. That's amazing that you've held it in there that long. Yeah, I've been held in, holding this story in, you know, talk about like growth and change. And especially like sometimes there's just like a perfect moment. So, my cousin, she met this guy on TikTok. Uh, this guy lives across 
the world in the UK. They've talked for maybe two months. She flew over there and got knocked up by him. <laughs> so, don't worry, you guys. It, it gets better. <laughs> so, my family is very traditional. You know, they're like, you gotta get married, you know. Um, you gotta get married, you gotta do the whole spiel. Um, and it's like no abortions or it's just like we got to meet the guy blah 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 and she's only met this guy once um and they're like all right who's going to pick this guy up from the airport and they're like greg will you pick this guy up from the airport i'm like yeah i'll pick this guy up from the airport you know i show up and i'm like okay this guy, he's coming from the UK. Um, I'm going to give him the proper American greeting, you know. It's just like I dressed up like a chauffeur. I put on a suit. I got a sign framed with his name on it. Got the sunglasses on. Standing in the airport, standing by baggage claim. He comes, you know, British guy, right? The British boy. He comes. <laughs> I'm like, follow me. And here we are on the escalator, right? I get on top of the escalator, show my dominance. And the next thing I say to him is, so you knocked up my cousin. <laughs> <laughs> and... That's the first thing you said to him? Yeah, first thing. <laughs> other, after, after he's just like, follow me. And it's just like, so you knocked up my cousin. <laughs> Good God. I'm like, this can go one or two ways. It was like, right now I have a shovel, some zip ties, and a roll of duct tape in the trunk of my oh car. My <laughs> You can call me the wizard. <laughs> God damn it. The wizard returns. And then never in my entire life is like, I'll call you the wizard. Like, it was so instant. <laughs> I'll call you the wizard. Oh, my God. You know there's a story related to the you, to you being called the wizard? Really? Yes. So... This is uh, about a couple months ago, and uh, Greg is over at my place uh, right before uh, our big move day. Oh, yeah. And um, so I'm telling him, like, yeah, you know, I'm staying at a friend's house. He had a couple kids. And, and you know, he's like, he's like, oh, I should just walk up to the baby and be like, hey, I'm the wizard. Or how do you say How do you say, say it? I'm the wizard. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. So I don't know. I'm like, yeah, it'd be kind of funny if he actually did say that. So we got done with the whole moving stuff on Saturday, on, on that, that next Saturday, and um, he drives me to the. We get to we get to to Bremerton. We get to my friend's place, and uh, sure enough, as we're getting all the stuff in, he walks by the kid and goes, "Hey, I'm the wizard,", wizard. and just walks away. And I'm just like, "Oh dear Lord, he actually did it." <laughs> And this is what's great about it as well, too, is later, you know, the husband, right? Boyfriend. The, boy, yeah, the boyfriend yeah. goes up to Josh and is like, did he just tell the kid that he was the wizard? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the funny part is Haley was just as confused as Daryl was. They were like, did he just tell... Did he just say so, he was the wizard? And I was like, long, long, long story. Uh, but that was so funny because it was just... You were like, I, I'm. I, it would be funny if I told the baby, "Is like, I'm the wizard." I am the wizard. And then you walked, and the baby was like, "I'm the wizard," and walked away. It's like, and when I met, you know, the baby because the baby was born, you know, and I had to take mm. this British boy yeah. away, you know. I, I came up, I went to the baby. The first things I said to this baby is like, okay, "I was like, this may not be important to you now, but I am the wizard." <laughs> Wait, is that exactly what you said? To, exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh my god. Uh, exactly what I said to baby Liam. Oh boy. You know, and like you know, like the mom is like, well, not the mom. You know, like what, what, what is it? The aunt, you know, mm -hmm. is laughing. You know, I was like, oh, that's good. You know. <laughs> um, 
And, like, you know, Jason's like, yep, this guy's the wizard. (laughs) 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 It's like, yeah, (laughs) this guy. (laughs) This guy is. But it's kind of funny how quickly he said it was like, I'll call you the wizard. (laughs) It was was so fast. (laughs) (laughs) Did you really have a shovel and zip ties? Yeah, I did. And I put the, like, I still have it in my car as well, too. And what was great is that when I put his suitcase, it was right next to it as well, too. So I showed you, (laughs) I mean business. And when I called my aunt, you know, that day, because she didn't tell me where I was going to drop him off. And, like, I had to call her because she didn't give me any of the flight information or any of that, right? And I was like, where do you want me to drop him off in a ditch over the bridge? Like, what, where? Because I have a shovel, some zip ties, and a roll of duct tape <laughs> in the back of my car ready to go right now. <laughs> you just give me the word. <laughs> it's like, this guy's gone. He will disappear. <laughs> he will disappear because I am the wizard, you know? <laughs> oh, my God. So... He learned and grew to be part of our family. Because he didn't want to be buried by the wizard in the back of the woods. Yeah, man. You don't mess when, with the wizard. When, when a wizard tells you, you can either call me the wizard or you can never see anybody, anybody ever again. again. Call the well, man the freaking wizard. wizard. Exactly. <laughs> and uh, on that positive, happy note, uh, we're going to end the episode here. Um, you know, just it, it's... Just you can for, have fun growing. Yeah, you can have fun growing. Um, you know, just just make sure you uh, you, you you talk to people. You talk legitimately to people. talk to people. You know, just be yourself, grow, mm-hmm. learn. You know, remember. You know, everything's a season. You know, just because it may you may, may seem dead on the outside doesn't mean you're growing on the inside. Yeah. So um, thank you guys so much for uh, for listening. Uh, we appreciate it. As always, new uh, new episodes out on uh, the channel on 42, 42 Studios, and uh, we'll see you next week. And always remember, I am the wizard. He is the wizard. <laughs> Have a good night, everybody. Peace out.